gentlemen, welcome to the Pop Art Hunter channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a framing. A framing of a few pieces from the Secret of Nim, the Don Bluth classic. Well, let's go ahead and get started. All right, we have four pieces here. We're only gonna be framing three of them. And uh, the reason we're gonna be only framing three is I wanna do one of each character. I have two of Jeremy the Crow from Secret of Nim, and I'm only gonna choose one of these. Now, both of these kind of have a little bit of damage. Uh, what happened is um, yeah, this top cell was on top of the bottom cell and it ripped off uh, some of the paint and so on this one you will see little um, specks and bits if I could get to focus here of paint from this cell and then thus this cell is missing uh, some paint you can see the little uh, areas here that it's missing the paint and those line up exactly on there so I'm gonna um, frame one of these just so I have another another character even though the cell is damaged but I don't need to really frame both of them so uh, we'll go ahead and choose which one we're gonna frame uh, once we get it on the background to see what it looks like so let's go ahead and get started um, we'll start with uh, Miss Brisby so um, I did the background for this uh, myself um, and <clears throat> once we get this sleeve off it should be a little bit easier to see here so let's go ahead and take a look here that's upside down that's not right that's not right Whit! yeah you just like a, the like the rubber gloves you got to give the little little flick at the end or else it's not uh it's not a true glovening <clears throat> all right let's go ahead and get this out <coughs> of the sleeve if I can. It's very difficult with the gloves, so I'm just gonna <laughs> take the ediest bittiest corner of my fingers. There we go. Just gotta get it started there. <laughs> okay. I can go to the side. All right, so uh, yeah, I did this background myself, um, a screen capture from the actual film, and then I did Photoshopping to sort of uh, edit out the other elements and, and do a complete background so it's complete. Um, <clears throat> that way, no matter where I put this on there, it's going to look fairly good. So this is a, a pretty good looking setup there. So uh, first thing we wanna do, <laughs> we'll go ahead and get the frame itself and this is a 13 by 19 inch frame uh, as i've talked in many of my videos i like consistency in my framing the way they look um, but also um uh, in the size so that i can um, take things on or off uh, or in or out and be able to adjust uh, the pieces that are in the various frames without having to completely buy new frames. So if I want to rotate out something in a collection, I've decided to sell something, any of those things, I can just switch it out because all of the frames, or a majority of the frames for my 12 field uh, cells are within these 13 by 19 frames. And also I have quite a collection of 13 by 19 prints. Uh, and so even if I get rid of a couple of the prints, I can then put cells in them, or if I get rid of the cells, I can put the prints in there, etc. so on and so forth, and there we go. Okay, we'll start with one of the mats. This is a four-ply museum rag mat, as always, uh, for those of you who have not watched before. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up this cell of Miss Brisby. I don't touch this with my fingertips, really. I just kind of press the edge to give me a little bit. Of, it gives me a little dexterity not wearing the glove on every finger. And now I do like in many ways having the peg holes visible. Uh, for this cell, I almost wish um, you know, that the, the opening was a little smaller than I can cut some of that bottom off. Uh, but part of the charm, I think, of cells is to show that they're cells. Um, if you if you frame these in a way that you can't see any of the writing or the peg holes or you don't see the edges, I feel like it takes away a little bit of the charm of it. Um, I did that with one of my um, all um, all dogs go to heaven pieces where you can't. I mean, it, it looks like it's from the film exactly, and there's no um, <laughs> there's no real major variation. Just a slight adjustment on. Um, uh, the placement just because of framing um, complications, etc. So, I mean, just millimeters off from what it looks like in the film. But um, I, I think this adds a sort of charm. Uh, it makes it look like it's an animation cell and not a limited edition or Saracel or just some print that somebody's like, oh, I I really like the Secret of Nim. I think I'll print this off offline or some, uh, you know, print this photo from online and uh, just hang it on my wall. <laughs> it makes it look like it's an animation cell. And I like that because coincidentally, 
it is an animation cell. So there's not a lot of um, opportunity for me to adjust her size because I get uh, these mats um, with a quarter inch around each of the sides. So you get a little flexibility, but not too much. Um, about an eighth of an inch either way. Um, so that uh, looks pretty good there. So because we're doing a cell uh, and not a, <laughs> a sketch or a drawing, we're going to put another um, mat down so that this uh, cell does not touch the background. And because this is not an original background or anything, I, sh I don't feel any need to put a separate um, <coughs> cell. I'm gonna make sure this is oriented the right way. So I'm just gonna look at this. I don't really care uh, for the secret and in pieces because the backgrounds are a little bit more, they're a little bit more dark and a little bit more um, obscure. I don't really care if it looks exactly like it did in the film. So I'm not gonna get that um, specific about it. <laughs> but I'm just going to flick around to see if, you know, if there's any orientation that will go. I think that looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and turn that back around. <laughs> and actually, I'll scoot over just so it's roughly um, <laughs> the same. So just look at that a little bit. Yeah, I think, I think that looks good. All right. <laughs> so let's go ahead and tape that. And then on the back of this, I'm just going to put a plain white uh, mat backing. <clears throat> it's still the museum rag mat, and I use those just for consistency purposes. You wouldn't have to spend the extra money on that higher quality mat, probably. I mean, it's still probably a good idea, but um, you know, you could get by without doing that just because it's not going to be touching anything of the cell specifically. Um, <clears throat> and you also have this printed reproduction background. Um, so, uh, f you know, that's gonna be a layer between the cell. And in fact, if anything, uh, the, the the background would probably damage the cell before the back would because, you know, just the way that it's touching, but I'm not too concerned about that for now. So, <laughs> all right, we'll put that on there. All right, I think it looks good. I'm just gonna take one quick flip before we go forward. Yep, that looks great. So we'll go ahead and put the background on. And I believe that this was pretty well uh, uh, suited and seated. So I'm going to take the risk and close up all of these. <laughs> Why not, you know? Okay. So I can't get with the glove on. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Um, it gives a... It's kind of hard to see sometimes with the with the light there, but uh, you see some of my, my other cells over there. It's a kind of a, a trippy experience. So we got one uh, that is done. Yeah, happy with that one. <laughs> now the next one. Let's go ahead and start out with the frame. And then we'll do yeah, the UV <laughs> one ten inch acrylic. Yeah, and I already pre-pulled the, uh, these up a little bit, so that didn't take me so long to find it while filming. And I used my glove hand to hold this down not to get fingerprints. Uh, I had this one time before, though, when I was pulling up, and the acrylic lifted and kind of pulled, and these little tabs here scratch the front of the acrylic. So I always give a hold down, but I make sure I use my glove hand so there's no fingerprints and we avoid that. So multiple purposes for having the glove on, not just to protect the cell, um, and but it's also to not get fingerprints on. <laughs> yeah, okie dokie. One mat down. So we'll go ahead and remove this cell. Um, and these are, you know, um, I believe I got these for, they're for, uh, storing life magazines. I think that's the size that I got. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> they work really well for the cells. I, I fold them up and then I cut off the corners, uh, after I have, uh, you know, I've, I've measured the cell, I kind of fold up, take the cell out, and then I cut diagonally the corners off of each side. Uh, so there's a little bit of airflow in there. Um, and in case of any gas buildup, which is, you know, more of a nitrate thing, but um, definitely can be <laughs> for other types of cells as well, depending on how it goes. So I like to do that. So this one's pretty good. Can't really uh, do much with the positioning here. 
just going to make sure there's roughly the same overlap on each side. And then we'll go ahead and tape it down. <coughs> Oops, I'm going to do this one down here first. <coughs> so does it move? And I just like to make sure it's a... I don't want them to be too snug, but I give a just a, a, a tish of a of a pull to make sure that that, that it's not going to create a, a loose uh, or curled issue or you know sometimes if you have a rippling on the side and then you come back over <laughs> it'll uh you're kind of pushing down on a, a ripple or something or some kind of bubbling and then that can make more of a problem um, down the road because it uh <clears throat> kind of conforms to that ripple and you're you're kind of forcing it to keep that shape all right so that looks good I'm going to go ahead and put a, another mat down. And for me, I always take off the sticker stuff, just in case it makes it look more professional and get any sort of adhesive or asso out of there. Okay. And oh, here's the background for this. Once again, I kind of did this one myself. Uh, Auntie Shrew kind of covered up this whole mass in here. And, and so I filled in the gaps and stuff and kind of recreated some of that stuff. Uh, much of it you won't see, uh, but uh, that is, it's a labor of love trying to do those backgrounds. So I'm gonna just tape two pieces here, <laughs> roughly the way I did the other one. And then I'll see if I need to move it over. Not a lot of space. I could trim off some of the white. Um, you know, these have white borders. I could trim that off so I can move a little bit more, but I don't really think I need to. <laughs> uh, for this one, I kind of wish that Auntie True was, again, down a little bit further, just because you can see some of the background down there. But, again, it kind of gives it a little bit of charm uh, having the cell showing for me at least uh that's the way i like to frame it but that's the that's the thing about this is you know if somebody else was a collector and decided you know what i really want to um display these a little bit more like they appear in the film i don't want any of the stuff showing as far as um writing or any of that type of stuff they could easily just get a new mat for the same frame so if i were to sell this and sell it with the frame they could just replace the mat and since all of my frames are the same they could say well i'm just gonna buy you know, 50 to 100 mats uh, and just replace the matting and keep all the frames, the UV acrylic and all that stuff. And um, yeah, because it's consistent, they can get bulk discounts and all that stuff. So I think this looks uh, <coughs> probably good. Let's double check, yep, one more time. So for this, to make sure that's, yep, on the outside. I like that, double check the dust to make sure any specks or lint is on the outside and not the inside. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get the background. And then I will close this up. And we have one more. Even though we have two more cells left, we're only going to be framing one of them. I only want uh, one of each character. And so I don't need to do the last one. But we will pick which one we feel is the best. And by we, I mean me. Because uh, by the time this comes out, the decision will already be made. So there you go. Thanks for contributing. <laughs> you didn't even contribute until after the video came out. And then uh, I complained. And so let's look at this first. So here's the background for this. It's a little bit nebulous, some clouds and such. Um, I, I think it goes this way. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm just going to see with, without taking these out of the sleeve, which one I sort of like more. Um, this one is less damaged. Um, and, well... I mean, it's less damaged in the sense that it doesn't have as much, it doesn't really have paint removed from it. It has paint that's on the top of it. Uh, this one has paint removed from it. And so both of them have issues. Um, but this one, uh, you know, you can see through it. So you can actually see the sky and the value. And at first I thought, I think I want to frame this one because I like the pose better. And I like his, his expression a little bit better. Yeah, but now that I'm looking at it... I don't know. I mean, this one just has a, uh, it almost like, <laughs> it almost fits better. Um, Cause it seems a little bit, because he's very heavy to the right hand side there, this one seem more, it seems more centered in the cell. Um, and then also, I mean, technically it's not, the paint on this is not damaged. And so, <sighs> Here's the thing, I can always switch these out. It's not that hard, it's a standard size frame. I just have to tape this to a mat. I think I'm gonna go with this one. And that, that surprises me because I like this pose better. I wish this one, uh, oh boy, geez. I, for me, maybe I need to do that. And the fact that you can see through so visibly, it almost looks the same. So if you look at this one, it almost looks as though there is paint missing. Uh, but that is not, it's just the paint on top of it. And so, 
Uh, you know, it's sort of an illusion there, but this one's very clear. So yeah, let's go with this one for now, and I can always switch it around if I want to later. <laughs> not during this video, of course. I'm not going to spend all of your time, but you can skip through this, so I guess never mind. I don't care about your time. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> okay, so we do the acrylic first. Hey, I hope I can get through one video of framing without knocking the heck out of the camera. Because usually when I'm undoing this acrylic stuff, I pull up really hard and there's not resistance by my other hand or something and I whack the camera. So hopefully that doesn't happen. I've done it on almost every other video I think I've done recently with framings. I should be aware of it. That's why I have to keep telling myself. Okay, that's good. So we're going to put one of these down. And then, uh, okay, we're going to take this cell, because it's the one we decided upon, very, very painstakingly. Okay, so these bags are, are not fun with the, the glove on, but I, I try to have best practice, and I try to use the glove as much as possible. There we go. I, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it, I got it. Don't worry about me. Don't even look at me. Don't even think about me. I've got it. I know what, I know what I'm doing. I understand. Don't even consider it. <laughs> okay, so. I just doesn't want to doesn't want to get off the glove. A little bit of static cling there. So I'm just going to use <laughs> um, the edge of the finger to put some pressure on this so that I can just slide it <laughs> on top there. When there's not much of an overlap, sometimes it you know just falls within that crevice and it's hard to get down. I don't want to damage something, uh, you know, put a nick or a cut or something in the side of the cell. Okay, so this is good. Not too many options uh, for rearranging for this one. And again, that's part of the purpose of me wanting to show uh, the various um, elements of the cell and that it's actually a cell itself. Uh, but also it makes it easier to frame because you don't have a lot of options. I mean, you just kind of do what you can do because you have X amount of overhang and <laughs> there's not a lot of decisions to be made. Uh, when I did the framing of the panoramic uh, Templeton as an example, uh, I, had to, I had to be a little bit more careful about... Um, positioning because I want it to look as much like the film as possible again off a couple millimeters just because of the framing um, but that was a custom frame and I didn't measure every single thing uh, inch by inch before I purchased the mat um, because you know I mean it was such a large frame uh, you know I had only had so many options um, and I didn't want stuff to be uh, you know, too huge on the wall. So I had to look at those limitations as well. But for that, again, you have to kind of consider when I did the All Dogs Go to Heaven one, there was a little bit more wiggle room to play with. Um, but, and I wasn't showing any of the innards of the cell or the behind the scenes of the cell, you know, not something you wouldn't see on TV. And so because of that, I had a little bit more options and it took a little bit longer to frame because I had to keep checking back and forth. This one, not much to check. Is it taped down? Good. Okay, we're perfect. <laughs> That's about all there is to double check on these. So, all right, put down another mat so that nothing is touching. And for this, we will put down this piece of paper. I'll put two pieces of tape just to test. We'll flip it over and then we will <laughs> close her up and then we'll look at all three of these again so that you can see the final product. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I don't know if you can tell, I, <laughs> I taped it upside down. So, I have two choices to make. One, uh, I could just flip it around, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, but there's not beveling on that side. Oh boy. So for me, I I would I would normally just flip it around uh, uh, for ease of use for this video, but this shows you the mistake. So uh, each of these uh, mats has a bevel on it, and I like the bevel out front. Uh, so for me, I would not be able to sleep tonight at night knowing that this was upside down, upside down. But the good thing about this, even without the glove, which I'm going to just take the glove off, I can touch the tape for this, and I'm just going to flip it over. <laughs> and now that I think about it, that's probably not going to work either, right? But I think I'm going to try to just reuse the tape. Um, yeah, okay, so this is taped down, or this is the correct way, the bevel is out showing. <laughs> By the tape, I'm going to 
uh, just move this. <laughs> and then I'm going to take off the tape. Okay. <laughs> this is like oh, that, uh, you know, me measure, measure twice, cut once sort of thing. That's really what you should do with tape. You should consider once, <laughs> or, you know, consider twice, uh, cut tape once. Okay, so for this one, I got those taped down, okay? And, okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove tape um, from one side at a time and just re-fix it. And I'm just touching just the edge to get some leverage on these. And then just taking off the tape, okay. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Okay, so pull up a little bit on that. <coughs> Again, just I just touch the edge of the <coughs> cell with my finger. So as I've not to get fingerprints on it or too much oils or anything like that, we're just taking off the rest of this tape here. We were so close to being done, but this shows you that even uh, even an expert, <laughs> you can't call me an expert, uh, even the most expert of cell framers <laughs> of the amateur variety can make mistakes. Uh, and so it shows you, you have to be careful <coughs> when you're doing this, if you want things to be perfect. Now, again, I think it, it wouldn't have been as noticeable um, with the bevel out or flipping something around. Um, this would be different if it was, if this had been a cell um, <coughs> edge that was part of, you know, an inner layer or something, I could have maybe flipped it around. Yeah, but I probably wouldn't notice the error because things wouldn't have lined up. And so that's just something to, yeah, to be aware of that, don't be stupid like me. All right, I'm gonna put one more piece of tape here. This side just begs for a piece of tape. Okay, so for this, I'm gonna put this back in. I'll flip it over, let's double check. All right, looks pretty good. I'm gonna make sure this spec is, yep, that's on the outside. <laughs> it was worrying me. And we're gonna quickly, uh, I'm not gonna waste too much more time here. We're gonna quickly put some, some tape stuff on here. So yeah, that's, um, and again, you can see how, how quickly I'm able to frame this stuff when they're so uh, universal. All of these are gonna look identical on the wall together. They're gonna look like they belong together in a set. Um, and and even if I put this on a wall um, with other pieces, it's going to look like it fits on that gallery wall. So I have a wall um, that you've probably seen behind me when I'm filming my intros and outros, um, and that has multiple cells in there. Well, I can pop one of those off the wall and pop this on and it fits perfectly within there. And I actually add the Velcro strips and I have a little jig where I know kind of where to put the, the strips. So the, the Velcro strips are in the identical locations as well. So I can literally pop this off the wall, pop the other one on, um, and I have a new piece or a new series uh, on the wall without having to even waste three M strips or something like that, or without having to waste time by taking cells out of frames or reframing or anything like that. I just pop them off the wall like that. All right, I gotta get the backing real quick. So, well, that is not the right backing. <laughs> this does not fit. <laughs> Give me un momento, one, one moment, please. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Okay, well, hold on. I have to look even further here. Okay, still give me a moment. I had to go to the secret stash of, <laughs> of backings here. I didn't have another one that was just laying out. Um, sometimes I'll end up with extras of these. Uh, I don't always use um, the museum rag mat for the backs of uh, some of these things. Um, so for a couple of the um, sketches or drawings I had where I ran out of some of the backs for some odd reason, or um, you know, a couple times I've, I've used multiple uh, rag mats um, because I wanted to keep rag mats because of the piece being so expensive. I wanted it to be acid free kind of all the way around. Um, and But the frame was maybe a little deeper or I got a shadow box and there was more cells within it. And so I use multiple of these backings um, and then I end up 
up with an odd number. And so, so for me, I, I just didn't order the full amount. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We've got those, and that framed. And we've got Auntie True framed. And we've got Miss Brisby framed. So yeah, all these look uh, pretty cool. I think they're going to fit really nicely and well on my wall. Uh, I'm happy to have these in my collection. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully these framings help you kind of consider some options for yourself, whether you use this size or something else. Um, you know, it's definitely something to consider trying to find some consistency in your framing and also your sort of style. Um, some of you might want different styles of frames around your house. Um, for me, I, I have always been... Um, I've always been attracted to the frames uh, that have had, you know, like color schemes that are uh, derivative of the cell itself. Um, so, for instance, like here's an example of that. Uh, you know, I, I purchased this already framed, and so having the red and the grays pulled from the cell and just and the whites. I mean, this is a really pretty frame. My only problem with it is it might not fit your decor. It might not fit the room that you're in. If you have this next to another uh, Ren and Stimpy cell as an example, I have a, you know, actually, uh, one second here. So this is a perfect example of that. And so this frame, it has sort of, uh, the black frame I don't think fits as well as the red one here. It doesn't pull in. It almost should be a blue frame or something. Uh, but there is black within uh, the background itself. Um, but then you have for the blue and the white that's sort of pulling from the color scheme here. But these frames are not the same size. They're not the same color. And so putting these on the wall next to each other, it might just look a little bit out of place. And so that's why I like to have all the same frames. Uh, it allows flexibility for me. Um, if if I was a more discerning collector or I had less pieces, I might go this route where I just have like one piece from each collection and or you know a certain room um, has it or I have them all the same size with different colors. If this uh, frame with the, the fire dogs with the baby, um, was a red frame or even a black frame, but the same size as this other frame, that would make it look better to me. And so uh, for me, I think that's just an important element for my uh, display purposes. Um, and you know, I mean, even these cells, this is from the same episode <laughs> and they look night and day. And so I bought both of these just as they are, but eventually I might reframe them. This one I'm gonna have a hard time reframing cause it's so well done. Um, but I, I, I just can't, I don't know if I can bring myself to do it just cause I love the red and how they put everything together, but it just doesn't fit with these other pieces. Um, and when I have 20 other Ren and Simpy cells next to it, it just looks out of place. So yeah, but anyway, happy with these. These pieces have been sitting in a folio for a long time and I've been meaning to frame them and meaning to frame them and meaning to frame them and they just kind of got lost to time. So uh, I finally took the time and uh, recreated the backgrounds uh, because they did not come with copy backgrounds. And so I was able to get those created and uh, able to have some time to actually sit down and physically doing the framing, um, which is something I enjoy doing. I like seeing that final piece. And so I'm um, glad that these are finally done. Thanks for watching the Pop Art Hunter channel. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If you have better framing methods or suggestions or sources for materials or any of those things or questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, stories, or music anecdotes, I'd love to hear them in the comments. Make sure you like, subscribe so you can see this content in the future. And thanks for watching the Pop Art Hunter channel. We will see you next time. <laughs> Thank you.